Hello everyone and welcome to Every Rock Has a Story. Now it's June 1st. This is the 21st video of Every Rock Has a Story that I've put together. And you know what? I'm still stuck here at home. I bet a lot of you are still stuck at home too. Um, I can't really go out. Boston College, which is where I work, is still closed for people to come to campus. So I'm still working here at home. And it's getting kind of frustrating. And I think for a lot of you, if you're like me, you miss nature. You miss getting out into nature. Or maybe a lot of you live in the city and you feel like there isn't much nature around anyway. So for today's story, I wanted to give you an example of a way that we can find the stories of nature right at home, even in a city. And so the material I'm going to choose today is this one right here. I wonder if you can tell what that is. Can you tell what that is? Let me bring it a little bit closer. That's not a rock, is it? It's not a rock. That is a spike. That's a railroad spike. Can you tell it's got a pointy end down here? And that's the end where they hammer it down onto those railroad ties. These are everywhere, these old railroad spikes. I collected this one myself right near where I live. There's a little path that they used to be a railroad bed and they turned it into a bike trail. And you can find every now and again one of these pitched off to the side. Now you probably know that these iron railroad spikes, well, I just gave it away, they're made out of iron. Um, and I'll tell you more about that in just a second. But the thing about this one that I want you to notice is what, what color is it now? It's kind of brownish, reddish orange. What is that? That's rust, right? This is, this is just a rusty old railway spike. Wait a second, Phil. Just a rusty railroad spike? Just rust? Do you know how important rust is to the earth? Let me tell you the story about rust. Rust is nature. People didn't make that rust. Nature made that rust. Now, people made the iron spike in the first place, and I would argue that people are part of nature too. But you don't have to go far away or far away from home or far from the city to find the stories of nature right before us. The story of rust is one of the most important stories on our entire planet. It's one of the things that makes our planet and our atmosphere unique. In order to make rust, you need oxygen. So this is iron. You need iron too. And when you have iron and you add oxygen and water, you make rust. Rust is a whole bunch of different minerals made of iron and oxygen and water. And now they cover this. Now there was a time in the Earth's past, if we go back two and one half billion years ago, where there was no rust. And there was no rust because the atmosphere had hardly any oxygen at all. And during those times, the oceans were filled with dissolved iron. Didn't make the oceans red, but there was lots of iron in the ocean, but no rust, no rust at all. Until about two and one half billion years ago, oxygen started to accumulate in the atmosphere. Scientists think that the oxygen grew up in the atmosphere because of plants or things like plants, not really plants themselves, but things that use a process called photosynthesis. And photosynthesis takes CO2 in and puts oxygen out. CO2 gas in, oxygen out. It's kind of how plants breathe or anything that uses photosynthesis. They take CO2 in to build their little plants and stems and they breathe oxygen out. Just like we breathe in oxygen 
and breathe CO2 out. Well, before two and a half billion years, there weren't really those kinds of life forms really dominating. But photosynthetic life really got cranking about two and a half billion years ago, and that began the rusting of the earth. At that time, all of the iron in the earth, especially the iron in the oceans, started to combine with the oxygen that was newly formed in the atmosphere, and the whole earth started to rust. You can find rocks like this one right here that record the great rusting of the earth two and a half billion years ago. I want to show you this. This rock is striped. See that? It has red stripes and silver stripes, kind of like a, a banded formation. In fact, all of those red and silver stripes are iron. And that is rust. That's natural rust. This is what we call a banded iron formation. Banded iron formations formed about two and a half billion years ago as the earth slowly rusted and all the iron combined with oxygen and turned into natural layers of rust. Now some of this is fun. I can take my geologist magnet and we'll see that those layers are also magnetic because some of those minerals are magnetic too, magnetite. Now, what's also interesting about this great rusting of the earth, this record of the rise of oxygen in our atmosphere that allowed us to ultimately live and breathe, this is a rich resource of iron. So people figured out the best way to get iron out of the earth was from banded iron formations like this. So people would mine this iron from, from here. They would get rid of the oxygen and get pure iron. And then what do you think they can make with pure iron? Bridges, and planes, and cars, and buildings, and even railroad ties and railroad spikes. This railroad spike, the iron in it, probably came from banded iron formation like this. This banded iron formation is red because of the rusting of the earth. And then when this railroad spike got pitched away onto the side and it got rained on, a lot of rain, and it got a lot of oxygen on it, it turned back into rust. The same rust that we see right here you see, we can find some of the greatest stories of the earth, some of the greatest stories of all nature, just by looking at the earth materials that we've created and how nature has transformed them, like this one. Rust. The story of rust. I hope you've enjoyed this story today about this rusty old railroad nail. Railroad spike. And I hope I see you at my next Every Rock Has a Story. Bye-bye.